With 10 years of blockbuster hits, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has proven that it can pull in just about anything from the comics and make it work, from talking raccoons to time travel. There has to be a limit somewhere, though, and for some characters, fitting them into the MCU would be a bit, uh, impossible. The MCU has a pretty good track record of throwing in characters who are good for a laugh, but usually they're humorous on purpose. The ones who are unintentionally hilarious, however, are a whole different story. Case in point, Master Pandemonium, a very serious villain whose arms are demons, or occasionally babies. His major role in comics involved kidnapping the infant twin sons that the Scarlet Witch had with her robot husband, the Vision, and turning them into his arms because having tiny boys for hands would allow him to accomplish something. What? It's honestly not really clear what exactly he wanted from this whole thing. In more recent years, Master P has been depicted as having a truly depressing life, where his hands, which are demons, are constantly dunking on him because he sucks real bad. That's kind of amazing when you have years of comic book history behind you, but getting a movie audience to react with anything other than absolute confusion would challenge even the greatest filmmakers. You might think that combining a zombie story with a superhero story would be the easiest possible concept to sell to an audience. In fact, it was. 2006 saw the release of Marvel Zombies by Sean Murphy and Walking Dead co-creator Robert Kirkman. The series brought horror fans and superhero fans together with a story that was pretty evenly split between over-the-top zombie gore and ridiculously slapstick comedy about superheroes eating each other. It was so successful that it wound up spawning a whole new series of sequels, including a story where the zombie superheroes invaded the regular Marvel Universe. That said, something that works in the comics, with an audience that's used to alternate realities, mirror universes, and other interdimensional hijinks, probably wouldn't work for a mainstream movie audience. As much as people like horror stories, there are very few people out there who would actually want to see Tom Holland's Spider-Man devouring Aunt May, even if they turn out not to be the real versions of the characters that might come off as a little upsetting. There's no villain in the entire Marvel Universe that deserves to be in a movie more than Galactus. The Devourer of Worlds was Marvel's first great cosmic threat, but sadly, it doesn't seem likely that he'll make the jump to the big screen anytime soon. For a while, it seems like the biggest obstacle for a cinematic Galactus came from the visuals. With his distinctive design by iconic Marvel Universe co-creator Jack Kirby, he fits perfectly on the page. But in a movie, however, selling audiences on the idea of a giant spaceman in purple armor with a giant tuning fork helmet probably felt like a tall order. That's why Big G's one and only film appearance in the now forgettable Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer depicted him as a very angry cloud. Now, however, we've seen a movie about a seven-foot purple spaceman using magic rocks to kill half the universe, and that made two billion dollars in a week. Oh, yeah. You're much more of a Thanos. Clearly, the visuals aren't the issue. The problem now is that in a post-Thanos world, a guy who only eats one planet at a time and actually kind of feels bad about it just doesn't seem like a big deal. At first glance, Kraven the Hunter seems like a no-brainer for the Spider-Man movies. After all, with the debut of Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home, he's the only member of the original Sinister Six who hasn't been on the big screen. The problem, however, would be getting him right. For one thing, his classic costume, which consists of skin-tight leopard print capris and a crop-top vest with no shirt underneath that appears to be entirely made from a lion's face. It might look a little silly translated into live action. At the other end of the scale, if you're planning on taking cues from his most famous story, Craven's Last Hunt, that would involve the character hanging out naked, submerging himself in, and then eating a room full of spiders, and then killing himself. Threading the needle between a little too goofy and way too dark would be pretty difficult. Plus, any adaptation that did not include his totally sweet ride, the Crave Van, would most definitely be an insult to the fans. For all of their flaws, the past 20 years of X-Men films can never be accused of ignoring the more obscure corners of Marvel's mutant population. In addition to fan favorites like Storm, Wolverine, and Deadpool, we've gotten big screen versions of little-known characters like Negasonic Teenage Warhead and weirdos like Zeitgeist and Bedlam. They have to draw a line somewhere, though, and it definitely feels like that would be drawn well before they got around to Adam X the Extreme. If you're not familiar with him, take a moment to imagine that the 90s were a dude. There, you've got it. That's Adam X, the answer to the question of what Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit would be like if he had superpowers. How 90s is he? Well, his costume includes a backwards baseball cap, and his mutant power is that he can set your blood on fire. He can only do that if you're already bleeding, though. So, of course, he has swords and wears shoulder pads covered in knives. On the one hand, that is a whole lot of 90s to bring to the big screen. But on the other, he can set your blood on fire. Who doesn't want to see that on the big screen? 
New world. Beck is from Earth, just not ours. The snap to our hole in our dimension. If we really are going to get full-on Marvel movie multiverse, there's no limit of how weird things can get. If they really want to go all out, though, they could always do a movie about the Squadron Supreme. If you don't know why that would be a big deal, here's the short version. The Squadron Supreme are a team featuring Nighthawk, a non-powered billionaire vigilante who fights crime by night, Zarda, a warrior princess from an isolated mythological land, and Hyperion, who, well, he's basically just Superman. In other words, they're Marvel's take on DC's Justice League. It would be one thing for Marvel Studios to fire a few shots at the competition by having the Hulk punch out not quite Superman, but imagine if they played it completely straight and just made their own Justice League movie that was better than the actual Justice League movie. That's a kind of ruthless move that even Thanos could get behind. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.